Hi, my name is Wendy with Creation Depot, and today we're going to be talking about the Firefox and Chrome extension called Keywords Everywhere. Stay tuned. Okay, so what is Keywords Everywhere? Like I already said, it's an extension that you can install into your browser, um, only Chrome and Firefox at the moment. Um, Internet Edge uh, and Explorer Edge is not part of that. Um, and it also does not have a mobile app. So we will see if they come out with that in the future. I kind of understand why they do it that way, but I, I can tell you a million times that I've wanted to do some keyword research and I've been out somewhere and having that access on my phone would have made all the difference in the world. So if you're listening to keywords everywhere, please come out with a mobile app. <laughs> it would be so useful and you have no competition. Trust me. I looked, you have no competition anyway. So back to Keywords Everywhere. Um, basically, the way that Keywords Everywhere works, once you install it, and it is a paid app, but it is ridiculously cheap. It is only $10 for 100,000 credits. And to give you an idea of how long that lasts, and I consider myself a heavy user, I have gone six months. I bought it in January. It's now June. I've gone six months and I've only used 25,000 credits. I started 100,000 and I'm down to like 75, 900 something credits. I've got a long ways to go. So for me as a heavy user, I, I mean, I use it every single day, but I use it nearly every single day. So I'm just not blowing through the credits like I thought I would. So for $10 for what now looks like it's going to be two years, like I said, it's nothing. So, um, long story short, how it works. Um, you do your search and what it does is on Google's SERP page, the search engine results page, what it does is that underneath your search, it'll have the number of times that keyword phrase has been searched. It'll say what the cost, um, if you were to run an ad for that keyword would be. And then the last thing it shows you is the competition for that ad, meaning how many other people are also trying to not add how many people are trying to be in comp competition for those keywords. So, and it's on a scale of one. So it's a little confusing when you first see it because it'll say something like 0 0.03 or 0 0.12 or something like that. I've never seen very high keywords, but I'm also searching for long tailed keywords. Keywords that are ultra specific. They, um, I would call them keyword phrases, not long tail keywords. Cause what does that really mean? It means several words put together to make a keyword phrase. And that's, that's your long tail keyword. Those don't tend to be searched nearly as much as the short ones. However, they are the ones that you want to focus on for several reasons, which we can get into later. This is a series I'm going to be putting out videos about how to use keywords everywhere to make your site and your blog and your YouTube channel worth a while. So back to keywords everywhere. It comes with three things. When you do your search, of course, you get that readout I just told you about. But on the right hand side on the Google search page, it has two widgets. The first one is going to tell you about related keywords, um, keywords that other people have typed in that kind of got the same results. And that is invaluable. That is invaluable because when you write your blog post, you want to have your your main keyword phrase that you're working on. And then you also want to have about three to four related keywords kind of mixed in there, you know, and how I do my process. And I do have a, an SEO template for that, you know, shameless plug there, but basically you're taking those related keywords and you're popping them into certain places in that, in that template, in that blog post. And that is what centers Google around this blog post being a good thing, you know, because it notices that these related keywords are in here. It notices that your main keywords in here and that helps drive up your traffic because it knows this one page that you made is a good thing. So on the second widget, it's got something called search. Um, it's not related keywords, but it's more of a people also searched for, I think is what it's called. Um, and it's not necessarily keywords that are considered related to what you worked on, but there are things that people also searched for. And those are really good for other blog topics you could write about. Like, let's say you write your first blog post and then you've got your main keyword phrase and you got your three to four related keywords and you group them into that. Then below it, you could see, okay, well, I'm looking for other content ideas, other things I could write about. You would look in the second one for those kinds of things, other things you can make videos about, other things you can make social posts about, that kind of thing would be in this second widget. So that's also useful for that. Now on these two widgets, you can turn on and off what you want to see. 
I leave everything turned on all the time and everything meaning the search, the, the price for the ad and the competition. I leave all that on on every single thing and it does charge me a credit for each one. Like I think the, the first one, the related keywords might have like 20 or 30 um, related keywords that pop up with their competition and how many times they're searched for. And then the one below that is the same. So I mean, I could have like 50 credits run on one search. And I'm searching when I do my keyword research, I'm searching like, I don't know, 50 or 60 different keywords. So, you know, that times that would really eat up a huge chunk of, of credits. But like I said, you know, when you get your, your content together and you're doing your search, you, you kind of stop doing the search for a little bit because you're writing the content now or you're recording the content now. And then you come back and you do it again. And so it's like big chunk of credits, kind of a little something here and there, big chunk of credits. Now, why don't I turn it off during those quiet times, like when I'm working on the content? The reason is, is because in Trello, I've got a list of all the keywords that I think I should do something on or something that maybe was highly searched, but has like no competition or something that has, um, well, that's pretty much it. <laughs> you know, you, that's like the golden ticket is something that is highly searched, but has almost zero competition. So it'd be really easy to rank for. And I have a list of those things in Trello. And so if I'm just going about my business, you know, I, I sometimes I'll turn off the widgets um, if I'm in that phase. But what I'll do is that if I'm searching for something and I see, um, and, and it just displays, it doesn't just display on Google. You can have it on Etsy, you can have it on Amazon, a million different places, right? Um, and so if I'm searching on Amazon for a specific product or something um, for myself, and then all of a sudden they see like, wait a minute, this comp, this is really search for it, And there's like no competition for it. Well, heck, that would be a really good thing to build a blog post about so you can have an affiliate link to that product. You see where I'm going? I wasn't looking for it, but because it just kind of came up in my day to day life, it became a good thing, right? Kids are running around. So it does turn out to be like a really good thing to turn off. Like if you're really worried about, you know, conserving your credits, Honestly, I think they severely undercharge for what they offer. I'm glad that they do um, make it more available to everyone. But, you know, it is being able to write and research in this fashion has been able to really help up my website traffic and my YouTube traffic and everything else. So like I'll be on YouTube looking for a video um, on how to garden something. And then all of a sudden I'll see, oh, wait, tomatoes are really searched for and the competition is OK on this one particular thing, you know. So maybe I'll make a video about that, you know, on my gardening channel farm station. So it's, that's the kind of mentality. And that's why it's useful to have on just in your everyday life, because you never know when you're going to stumble into the gems, you know? So having it there and just casually looking at the competition rate when you're, when you're doing your searches is helpful. It's useful. So uh, if you have any questions about this, I do want you to go ahead and leave a comment below, even if it's just a, Hey, thanks for the information, because that helps drive up the video. Um, results like if somebody's searching for something it'll help boost this video to the top and it helps it show up in suggested results so comments likes um subscribe of course you know if you do subscribe youtube now wants you to do the bell and do all so it's like a three-step process now subscribe it's ridiculous instead of just hitting subscribe it's a whole nother rant <laughs> but yeah that's the way you can see my videos so I hope this has been helpful. I hope to talk to you guys soon. And I'm very active on YouTube, so do leave a comment. I will respond and I'll talk to you later. Okay, right, thanks.